The following is a Just Green production brought to you by the Might Be News Network. Hello, this is Joe Franz for the Novak and Franz Show. Say hi, Novak. Hey, man, how are you? And this is our season finale. Well, no, it's, it's what is it? Mid-season finale. <laughs> Mid-season hey, finale. fuck it up immediately. I know. <laughs> it it doesn't take long. Out. Jesus Christ. You fuck up a wet dream, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's disgusting. Uh, uh, see, we're here with CJ Schumard. How's it going? Who is, uh, what is, what is CJ today, Novak? What do we call him? CJ is uh, my ace boon coon. He's the guy that I rely on through thick and thin, who never ceases to amaze me nor fail me. And of course, we have Taylor Cooper, who is the president of the Might Be News Network. What's up, everybody? Okay, so well, here's what's up. I've been getting calls from this guy who's been hanging out at Bam's house. Okay, so <laughs> everyone knows Bam built this awesome skate ramp. And um, he is, he has a lot of visitors. They come through town and a lot of them stay at his house. But the funny thing is, is Bam lives at another house. So he doesn't even know half these people are even at his, at his house. Right, right. So, so this guy is messaging me saying that he's the number one CKY fan. And he wants us to like get him on the show and do trivia with him. Which I think is the most boring thing I've ever heard. And you said he's like living at the house, right? Yeah, he's living at Bam's house. He's the number one CKY fan. And he's like, you got to get me on there and ask me all kinds of trivia questions. So the funniest thing is I said, well, how the fuck does Bam deal with having his number one fan live at his house? And you looked at me dead serious and you go, he doesn't even know he's there. Yeah, yeah. He has no idea. He doesn't know who's there. He doesn't know anyone's names. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. So Franz is gung-ho on this. He's like dying to prank this guy. I was like, whatever in the beginning. Now I'm a bit more sold on the idea. Yeah, I don't know I'm if it's gonna work. See how this goes. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna work. But. So yeah, so so this guy's been calling you, texting you. What tell us how it yeah, goes. Yeah, and he's and he's just he's like, he's like, you, you gotta get me on there. You gotta interview me. I'm like, about what? He goes, CKY trivia, which is boring. This is not a trivia show. I, you know, so I'm, I'm going to try and prank him. Hopefully this works. Okay. Well, the funny thing is, is you've called him about 25 minutes ago and told him to hold on. He's been on hold this whole and time. And he's still happily, <laughs> not even on hold. He's happily on hold. And we hear him like fucking humming in the background. And he's nervous as hell. <laughs> um. So, okay. So here. here. Now, is, or does he know he's on a radio show, a podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. He's been dying to get on this podcast forever. Okay. So this is his big chance. Okay. So we're going to prank him and we're going to see, we're, we're, well, he might not even believe me because I have to disguise my voice. It's a whole thing. He right. thinks he's at the, the call screener right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All, right. yeah. All right. So here we go. I'm going to patch him through. Okay. <clears throat> Yo, this is Franz for the No Back and Franz show. Who's this? Hey, it's Justin. Oh, Justin. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're, we're. It's Tristan Franz. Tristan with a TR. Tristan. Right, right, right. Okay. Well, we're not. Tristan, at- T-R-I-S. My cousin's name's Trayson. Wow, Trayson. Fuck. Tristan, Small and he's old, like Brad Pitt from Legends of the Fall. Come on, bro. Oh, right, right. Oh, what, look, look, we're, we're not on yet. Hold on. We're, we're doing a I whole thing here. I didn't commit treason. Why do you keep saying that? Wait, the whole board's lighting up. Let me let me get you through the screener real quick. He's going to patch you through. Don't hang up. Come it's on, it's impossible to get back to us, okay? People want to fucking know. Okay, hold on one second, please. Okay. All right, great. Now, <laughs> he's back on I got to. Okay. So now uh, I'm going to disguise my voice. You think uh, you think he's going to recognize me? I, I don't think, but he, if he's such an avid CKY fan, he'll see right through this. Think about that. Right, right. But he might not because he's nervous. So wait, what's the plan? Are we going to bring him in at the very end and be like, oh, sorry, dude, we're well, out of he time. He might not even fall for it, but that's the idea. Well, keep I thought him we were going to let him on hold for a couple more minutes while we took a No, no, off. no. It's better than that. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Uh, no one knows what the fuck's going on here. I know. Problems. They're going to find out. Okay, here we, we go. We don't even know. Here we go. Fucking confused. I know. Hold on. I got to patch him through. Hold on. Why are you pressing buttons? <laughs> you do wait, meth wait, before wait, wait. I No, here? hold on. This is complicated. Okay. Shh, shh. Yeah, hello. Caller. What's up? Yeah, this is Herschel. I'm over in Dover, Delaware. I'm the screener for the Novak and Franz show. What's your name, please? Tristan. Okay, Tristan. Uh, what the, what's the nature of your call? Well, I got a lot of calls uh, coming through here. Uh, what's 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 the nature of your call? Um, I I know everything all CKY and stuff. I'm CKY's biggest fan. Oh, that sounds good. Good. Oh, let me write this down. CKY fan trivia or something. Want to do yeah, some something trivia? like that? I'm I'm the one that Franz passed in. Cool. All right. Uh, all right. Here's the thing. We're we're trying a whole new thing here. We want every caller who calls in to have a joke. Do you have, do you, do you got a joke for us? 
I can I can come up with something. Well, okay. What's your joke? Come on. I don't know this. Uh, okay. Well, I, I got a lot of calls coming through. Just one off the top of your head. It can be sexual in nature, but whatever you want. Just no no racism or anti semitism, please. I mean, I can I can do like the Ray John voice, like do do do. You know what I mean? Like something yeah, that's like, yeah the, yeah. Out. You you got a knock knock joke? Anything? Come on, babe. Uh, a knock knock joke. Uh, I'm dying over here. Got calls coming uh, through. Hold on. Well, I didn't know the, hold the, hold the like other this. call. God damn it! Hold the other fucking call. Okay, Tristan, go ahead, please. Okay, you, I, mean, I, can, I can I can act like uh, I can act like I was calling my girlfriend. Okay, go ahead. Hit me with it. Let me hear. Okay, like when they answer the phone call, I can say, uh, "Hello, is this Tracy?" Uh huh. Say, "No, this is the Novak and Franz show." And I said, oh, "I was calling my girlfriend that I didn't really have." Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not following the humor there. Uh, how's that? Uh, That's one of their jokes that they will get. That was not funny. Uh, are you sure they're gonna get that? Uh, because okay, Absolutely. don't you know any normal jokes? A joke, a sex, you know, guy and a girl walk into a bar kind of thing. Come on. Uh jeez, man, no. Well, we'll practice it. I'm gonna put you on hold. Oh, oh, hold on, my, my my goddamn dashboard's lighting up. Hold on a second. Oh, looks like I think they're ready. Hold on, hold on. All right. So how did that go so far? God, he's buying it. He's buying it. He's it's definitely funny. buying it. Any guy that doesn't know one joke. <laughs> I know. Joke. <laughs> okay. I hate jokes, and I can tell you a joke right now. All right, we're, we're going we're gonna to get back to him. Okay, here Wait, we go. Wait, why don't we leave him on hold? Wait, I thought we were going. No, 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 hold on. Let, let me get back to I him I told you we fucking okay. prompt calls too okay, soon. Okay, here we go. Hello, this is Franz for the Novak and Franz show. Yo, it's Tristan M. Yo, okay, cool. Uh, did you talk to the screener? Do, do you have a joke ready and all that stuff? I mean, I didn't know I needed to have a joke, but okay. I, I told him I would do something like Deco where I could do a voice and say, I, when you answered, I was calling. Yeah, he's, he's trying to do this whole really thing happy. with like knock, knock jokes or something. Well, listen, okay. We're still on break. I'm going to patch you. Uh, we're going to put you on hold. Don't hang up and we're going to get right back to you. Okay. Don't hang up, please. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right, cool. Let's just keep him. Let's just see how long he wants to stay in hold. Let's just go to the lines. Do anything you fucking ask. Hopefully, I'll have a joke by the time we come back to him. Okay. All right. Uh, Caller's uh, on. Yeah. Hello, caller. Hello, caller. You're on the the air. (laughs) This is so confusing. Well, CJ, why yeah, fix it, like it is not up. broken? You are officially twelve and zero of fucking up the first phone call. So, uh, so how long do you think this guy's going to wait on hold? He's fucking at BAMS as number one fan, which means he has a free schedule for the fucking unsurmountable period of time in the future. The only yeah. way he's getting off is if BAM comes in. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and he wants to do shtick. Like, he wants to, like, call up and rake Jan, Jan's voice. Like, doesn't he know we could just get rake Jan? I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> got to prove his point. So what's been going on, Franz? Oh, uh, well, I've been uh, f- uh, completing work on the Dream Seller sequel, The Streets of Baltimore. It's currently... Completing? Yes. So Finished? It, uh, I'm editing out some extra stuff. I, I want to cut down about a thousand words. Okay. Um, you know, make it a little little briefer, a little, little bit more to the point. Um, you know, I noticed that a lot of my language has... I, I like... I like to make some of the parts a little bit more poetic and a lot of, a lot of the times that works, but a lot of the times I just, it has too many words. So yeah, I've Franz been, been likes to, to, to beat a dead horse. Sometimes the reason why I know speaking from experience is because I, I, I had the pleasure, truly the pleasure of having of me reading, write his first book. Oh, fuck off <laughs> uh, of, of, of reading the streets of Baltimore. And you know, if you remember the last show, one of the last shows we did, he he said that it was going to be better than Dream Seller, and and I kind of couldn't wrap my head around that statement. That was a powerful statement. So I got the copy, and then I printed another copy uh, because I could be biased, right? I, I could have favoritism throughout certain stories, and and whatever the case may be. Right. So I wanted to have somebody that was not connected to the project at all, but had recently read Dream Seller. So that impression was still fresh in their mind. I wanted them to read The Streets of Baltimore and I wanted to get their take on it. And lo and behold, I, I let uh, a husband and wife read it uh, and and they were blown away and they said, absolutely, it's, 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 it's not better than Streets of Baltimore. It's like, it's just as good as Streets of Baltimore, just in a totally different way. As Dream Seller, you mean? Like, 
Yeah, yeah, as dream yeah. seller. It's, like, it, there's it, not yeah. one that's better than the other. They were both equally powerful and just such different. It's a different type of story because although there is a part where you go to rehab, there it's not a rehab story, which is why I think it's better. So this is a lot of action, um, tons of romance and and broken, heartfelt relationships, and also your experiences on Viva La Bam are chronicled. And like you know, a third of the book is devoted to. Your story, your behind the scenes cocaine addiction. And I think that, that people are going to be fascinated by not only what it took to make the show with you high, but you're, when we started doing that show, you were sober. Yeah. And you, you're, you, you had beat your heroin addiction, but your cocaine addiction started. And in. alcoholism kind of became awoken. Yes. And because that's socially acceptable mm-hmm. in the entertainment world and really in society as a whole. In West, I mean, Westchester, Westchester is a college especially. town. You know, it's, it's populated by kids who want to party and let loose. You, the cool thing that I thought was the first book, it really, uh, we were so descriptive and we were so to the point, matter of fact, that yes, the reader believed they were in my shoes walking. Mm-hmm. Now, same deal. Reader believes he's in my shoes, but not well, with the experiences, but also I really believe that they can honestly grasp addiction and what it feels like to suffer from that disease. Because as you just noted, I start out like overcoming my heroin addiction. And then you literally walk in my shoes through me battling. Do I use? Do I not use? Yeah. Is it okay? Will it fuck this up? Can I do it this way? But, but, that but it's set to... You're, you're, you're literally living on the streets. You're, you're, you're living under a porch. Yeah. You know, you're, you're living in a crack house. You're getting stabbed. Yeah. You know, you're, you're hus- you're getting arrested throughout the whole book. But and then throughout that, then I end up in like a uh, multi-million dollar mansions driving like yes. expensive sports cars. There's a juxtaposition between the two lifestyles. And also, you know, Novak and I went through uh, a lot of work um, we we went to Baltimore, visited police stations, lawyers' offices. Uh, um, My favorite part hospitals. is we go to hospitals. We spent days on days going to these places to get these records to f- make a timeline. Yes. But my favorite part was when we hired a private investigator. And I go to the private investigator. I said, I, I would like everything on me, police record, police r- reports, dug up and brought to service. And he cuts you off and he yeah. goes, whoa, 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 hold on a second. Now, I know that a lot of addicts like to have their records expunged and we're going to try. We're like, no, 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 no. We, we don't want, want the records. Anything we don't want it disappearing. We want it at all. Yeah. He's like, I've never, ever, ever in my 32 <laughs> years of practice had someone call me and make this request. And so the good news is the book has over 50 pages of full color photos, Novak's hospital reports, rehab records, Police and, records and arrest, arrest records. records. So it's when we're like, telling a story, directly behind the story of it's a, an arrest uh, is the arrest record, yes. the police report, what I was in possession of, whether it's money, whether it's drugs, how many drugs, how much money, you know, it, there's, yeah. This- and, the, and the photos are awesome too. We got Ryan G's photos. We got Roger Bagley's photos, Adam Wallachavage's photos. I mean, these are, are three of the prominent, uh, skate and portrait photographer, pop culture photographers in that era. And we have the rights to all their photos. So, I mean, you, you get a Thick section of behind the scenes Viva La Bam photos and all this, you know, great personal snapshots and moments. It's amazing. All right, let's go to the caller. I really hate to do this, yes. but I have to give credit where it's due. To me, and, thank uh, you. I, now you notice uh, I still haven't said your fucking that's name. That's true. I'm pointing in your direction. You never will. I'm somewhat looking at you, but I don't really want to do this, but mm-hmm. I, I have to uh, because I'm just a spade's a spade here. You you went above and beyond. You really outnumbered yourself. You outdid yourself on this one, and uh, I'm happy to report that the streets of Baltimore is just as good as Dream Seller. I don't want to say better because it's not. It's just as good, just as powerful, just in a different manner. It means a lot. Thank you. It's, I appreciate uh, that. I'm really, really excited. Thank you. And I hope everyone else is too because uh, we're- <laughs> This is the we're, fucking we're, sequel we're gonna to have Dream it We're going to have it out by Huge. the end of the year. When did when did Dream Seller get published? 2009. So 2009 cut ten, to 2019. How many years is that? 10 years. Ten, 10 years in the making. Here it is. Yep. Wow. It's incredible. Well worth the wait. Thank Hang you. tight, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. We're fucking there. All right, let's go to the line here. Hello, caller. Sorry about the wait. No problem, guys. What's going on? Hey, man. Good, buddy. What do you got for us? Uh, I got a question for uh, each of you. Um, first off, my name is Corey. Um, but uh, first, I uh, go with Novak. Uh, do you ever do an audio book to Dream Seller? 
I don't know that. Franz would know. No, we're not going to do an audio book. Number one, um, we want to encourage people to read. So we get, um, you know, you know, every week I probably get about 10 or, you know, 10 or 20 thank yous to, from, from kids, you know, ages like, you know, uh, 15 to 17, you know, right, right around there. And they say, I was never going to read a book. I didn't care about reading until someone recommended sure. Dream Seller. It was my first book. Um, and, and the other, you know, the other reason is if it's a, if it's an audio book, people will just pirate it. And, you know, we, yeah, these, these books, sure. these books take a year to write without a paycheck. Like I literally have to sit without a paycheck for a year and I need some kind of compensation to keep me going to get to the next project. So that's, that's one of the things about being an artist. A lot of people, they love your work, but they will pirate it. And, you know, a lot of people don't understand that, you know, that's, they they don't sympathize they they love your work but they don't sympathize with you sitting for a fucking year without a paycheck so so that's but no, the, you know I, but the I big, agree with you there yeah and, but the big reason is you know we we encourage first time readers yeah that's uh hey I can't I can't lie that that's part of the reason I don't read much I'm a lazy dude and <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to when it comes to reading uh you know I'd much rather just throw on a throw on an audio book but yeah um, buddy. Just curious, but also for uh, Franz, are you still uh, you still a big time liberal? A liberal? No, I am a, a rabid extremist centrist. <laughs> so I do not I, I do not tow party lines at all. Um, I you well, know, I like I was, to see the both sides of every argument. Basically, just curious on what you think about the the whole the whole Mueller. Uh, situation going on today well, if you heard anything about it yeah well here's a guy who just spent you know so the uh, he just testified uh before congress today and yep. um you know here's a guy who has spent what four years now talking about russia collusion and he spent mm -hmm. 25 million dollars of our taxpayer money and he does right. not have any evidence that so much as one voter uh, was influenced by the Russians. So the theory obviously was that, um, you know, you know, the, the, the Russians had a control of Facebook. And when someone typed in the name Trump or Clinton, a signal bounced from their computer up to a satellite <laughs> over to Russia, where there was hackers and, and writers ready to, to cater articles to their communities, which would sway their vote into voting for the evil horrible white right. cis male Trump. And as they're sitting there typing on their computer, they get all of a sudden, bing, uh, Facebook news, Facebook ads. And in that article is the swaying argument, the, the, the winning argument that will sway their vote towards voting for Trump. And there's all this stuff. And it's like, wow, dude, after $25 million in four years, Mr. Mueller, you can't prove that one voter changed their mind due to these uh, horrible Russian hackers. So I think it's it's a bullshit thing. Mueller just wants to write a book and, you know, kind of cap off the tail of, end of his career. And Good luck, Mueller, because we just wrote the fucking Trump of all books. Oh! The of Baltimore. See what I did there? Did I hear that? Did fucking hear right. That right, you guys? You guys have a new book coming out? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Streets of Baltimore, sequel to Dream Seller. It's going to come out late in the year. September. Oh, shit. Good work, guys. All right, well, thank you, brother. We appreciate your call. All right, guys, appreciate it. No okay, bye-bye. Thanks. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go back to Tristan, who's been on hold this whole time. I say we let him fucking wait. He's, He's still on hold? No, 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 let's see if he has a joke. Okay, here we go. Yeah, hello, caller. Yeah, this is Herschel over at the call center. Do you have your joke ready yet? Uh, I mean, I guess. Okay, great. Uh, lay it on me. What you got? Uh, knock, knock. Uh, who's there? Uh, orange. Orange Hill. Orange, glad I didn't say pussy wussy. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I understand the they're joke. Gonna, they're going to get it. What's the pussy wussy? I don't understand. I mean, I know it's sexual in nature, but uh, it's, uh, it's not demeaning to women, is it? Because we don't like to do things like that. No, it's saying, aren't, aren't you glad I didn't call Franz and Novak pussies? But what's the pussy wussy? Because I know that the Trump got a lot. The President Trump got a lot of trouble for, it's, you know, he said the whole thing grabbing women by the pussies. And I just want to make sure, you know, we don't really big, talk politics on the show. You see, that's the thing. Big 
no, the big comedian in CKY was Di Camello, and he would say in like a French voice, like, aren't you glad I didn't say a pussy? Oh, uh, it, so it's like a, um, it's, it's, just it, a it's an insider character. joke kind of a thing, eh? For CKY, yeah. Uh, right, okay. You see, okay, great. Okay, looks like we're going to patch you through. Um, just, just do me, do us all a big favor. See if you can, I don't know, maybe find a joke. <sighs> So, something. Okay, I'll try. I'll okay, try. okay, thank you. Okay, okay. Ho- uh, my goddamn dashboard's lighting up. Okay, hold on a second. All right, cool. Uh, looks like Tristan's gonna stay on hold for a little Just while. Just time for us to take a break. So you've been listening to the Might Be News Network, but you still can't get enough each week? Become our patron on Patreon. Head to patreon.com slash MBN Network to become a patron and get exclusive content now. For as little as $5 per month, you'll get access to extended episodes of all your favorite shows, as well as perks including MBN merch and monthly giveaways. Just want to support the network? Become a patron for as much or as little as you'd like. Get bonus content each week and head to patreon.com slash MBN Network. Your contributions help us make this network bigger and better than ever before. Patreon.com slash MBN Network. Okay, so let's go to the uh, let's go to the real lines while Tristan uh, sits on hold trying to think of a good joke. <laughs> Judging by his voice, I think that will never come. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, caller. Welcome to the Novak and Franz show. How's it going, boys? Good, good. Like the voice. I know. Very I deep. Just this dude's got me on, big man. balls. Ooh, ooh. Got the radio voice and the face to match. Nice. Oh boy. <laughs> you should play the lotto. What um? What's the nature of your call, sir? Uh, just a quick question about your guys' idea on the idea of nostalgia. Yeah. When you get like nostalgic about things, does it make you happy? Does it make you sad? Novak, what do you, you get nostalgic about? Depends. You know, that's, that's a, uh, it, it, it depends on what's making me nostalgic. Well, whether it's a good memory, a bad memory, mm-hmm. a, a smell of, of my first kiss or the, the place where I fucking shot my last bag of heroin. You know what I mean? Like, definitely going to bring that nostalgic memories. Just in Baltimore, when you have to pass through the old drug neighborhoods to get from point A to point B, do you ever feel, I don't know, in a way nostalgic towards that horrible lifestyle? I I know it sounds weird, but does does it stir up some, what kind of emotions does it stir up? Uh, A wide array of emotions, you know, anywhere from uh, sad, uh, depressed, to then very grateful and, and, uh, and, and, empathetic and sympathetic and compassionate to the guys and women that are still out there going through that struggle day in and day out, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah, it it take, it take, it walks me down memory road. It really does. I, I, I can recall sitting in my mother's house, you know, just, uh, so disconnected, disassociated from reality where the abnormal turns into the normal, and, you know, and I'm just, I'm, I'm living to use and using well, to live. Let, let and me ask you this. Cut to like what, current day. What are the memories from that era in your life that you have a fond uh, remembrance of? Oddly enough, the people that showed up to help me, mm-hmm. you know, um, looking back now, I can see how much I was loved and how much I was cared for. Because again, I talked about this yesterday, the opposite of addiction is connection. And I was so disconnected at that time that I felt so alone and I felt like no one was there for me. Now, looking back on those times, the worst of times, people reaching out to me, I can see that, that I wasn't. That was my disease just making me completely delusional. Mm-hmm. Is, is that the kind of uh, memories you were talking about, caller? Yeah, I mean, anything really. Yeah. I was thinking like, uh, even from like an entertainment standpoint, right? The reason I actually thought of the question was I uh, caught one of the American Pies or something on TV recently. And I was watching, I was like, kind of got bummed after seeing it. You know, I used to like love those movies when they like came out and stuff. Yeah. But like, just like a different time period, you know? Yeah, I know what but you mean. ties in with what you're saying. Yeah, I get nostalgic, you know, as, as a generation X or child of the 80s, I get nostalgic for, you know, the old comedies like, you know, Fletch, uh, The Three Amigos, um, the Blues yeah. Brothers, you know, a, a, you know, anything with like John Candy in it, Eugene Levy, SCTV, old school Saturday Night Live with Chris Farley, that kind of stuff. You know, I, I have a, a, a library of about 3000 movies and another 2000 or some shows. 
And, um, I, you know, I watch those and I'm like, God, like a part of me wishes it was 1994. There was no internet, no fucking cell phones. And, um, you know, life was so much simpler then. When I was a kid in the 70s, I had neighbors that didn't have telephones or TV sets. Welcome to Amish present day. Yeah, No, it, I mean, it's the suburbs. It was just expensive and some people just didn't fucking have them. It was, it, I don't know. It was, it was a simpler time. Um, you're so really dating yourself, old man. I know, I know. Quit while you're ahead. I just had a birthday. See, now he's getting all fucking nostalgic. Know, Thanks a lot, caller. Now I got to yep. walk down Franz's memory and lane. And now at ass. 39 years old, I feel oh, that. Uh, and now at 39, <laughs> <laughs> ironically enough, celebrated four years sober and I'm still sitting in a fucking cellar of a basement that's dark and dingy. Thank you. All right, caller. Shouldn't be well, this way. Well, I hope that answered your question. Yeah, man. Oh, he's like, I don't know what happened, but okay, let me get off this call. It's like, what's this animosity? <laughs> you have any closing words, caller? Yeah, fuck Franz. No, great no, no, closing you know words. I rewatched re Sticking on Nostalgia. I rewatched uh, the last series from Band, uh, The Wedding. Uh, oh, The Unholy, uh, Unholy Union. Union. Oh, The Unholy and, Union. And uh, Novak, God bless you. My favorite line from the whole show was when you called Jermaine, uh, what is it, Fax Remain? He was trying to take a piss. I fucking forget. That that. I was so high too. on that whole goddamn show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I walk, I, I live in old city, uh, Philadelphia now. And I, I go to the gym every day and I ride my bike past the Lowe's hotel where that show was filmed. Right. Speaking of nostalgia. And I, I, there every day I ride my bike past it. I remember getting wheeled out after the show was done. We were done filming. Everyone was leaving. I remember getting wheeled out on a, a bellhop cart because I had lost my crutches and all I could do was you were on a wheelchair. I lost my wheelchair. Yeah. I'm sorry. I lost my wheelchair. <laughs> Who loses a wheelchair? I do. Brandon Novak. And they had to push me out on a, a bellhop cart. And then for the remaining day and however long it lasted, I had to, to, to just drag my ass on kind of like a, a dog when it, shits and his ass doesn't get wiped right. properly and has got to drag his ass across. <laughs> so that's what I look like. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember when, um, yes, yeah, you had just, yes, yeah, so you had fucked up your leg on, on Bam's ramp. Both. And, and Broke so, both ankles. And I remember you got a bottle of, um, you went it? with me to get that script filled. Yeah, I took you. I gave you I, a I'm pill the one who took you to the hospital. Yeah, he gave me two pills. Yeah, you asked for I two took, pills. Yeah, I took them. I oh, never I got, oh my God. I was, I was I fucked up for two days. Away. Yeah, what what were they? Uh, they were fucking weak, man. They were like not for me. Yeah, to, they were like hydrocodone or something. I had to eat like a whole bunch. Oh of my them. god, it was so bad. I was like, I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, I, Novak just took twelve of them. I'll just take two. <laughs> I was I was stoned for two days. It was terrible. I was like, when is it gonna end? <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. So you you had gone through a month worth worth of pills in like two in and a half night. Days. No, in yeah, a night. Yeah. Well, I got gone. back and Bam was there waiting with a bottle, a glass of Jack on the Rocks for me. Because I had like just, you know, kind of what the streets of Baltimore talks about. I was rewarded with my outrageous behaviors, my 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 outlandish antics. I was yeah, rewarded I with like a glass of Jack Daniels on the rocks. Yeah. You know, so although I'm fighting this addiction, I'm rewarded by my outrageous behaviors because we're filming such an outlandish Oh, and TV you were rewarded. Show. I remember you used to show up, you would go, you you would range to get paid in cash uh, yeah. to work on Unholy Union. And then you would leave, go to Baltimore and, and score drugs. And then I remember one time you showed up and you were so fucked up and like, bam, couldn't talk about getting you back on the show forever. Cause you were missing for an episode. And so <laughs> it was like two weeks since we saw you and I you, you showed up again. Bam goes, you know what? When Novak's gone, you miss him. When he shows up, you can't wait for him to leave. <laughs> you were, that's oh, that's you were true. Such a fucking mess. But I uh, purposely arranged to get paid in cash every day. And then the way I arranged it, they said, okay, well, we'll give you this much per day. Yeah. But if you do a crazy stunt, we'll give you this much right. as like a bonus incentive kind of pay ar mm -hmm. archive. And you couldn't wait to fucking get, it was a race to get home after we were done filming. Yeah. I've never seen any, it was like the invisible man. It was like, it was like you had a, 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 tr a transport, a transporter, which will like take you to another dimension. You were fucking gone. I was like, how, he didn't even have a ride. Yeah. How, how did he fly home? Dude, I'd get my uh, pay for the day and I was gone, man. And you know, they were willing to pay me because they wanted me fucking out of there anyway. Yeah, that's true. It's like, yeah, just <laughs> a win-win. He didn't do anything today, but pay him anyway. Get, get him the fuck. fuck. <laughs> get him high. Dude, you know how much money I lost by rigging it up that way? 
all off the oh, books. Oh, tons. Tons. Oh, yeah. Dude. You didn't care. It was cash in hand. Yeah. You couldn't wait for Friday for the paycheck. You had no to way. have it then. Every day. You took a third of the money. At, at best. What I want to know is, who took the other two thirds? <laughs> <laughs> Not missing no names. All right. Thank you, caller. Thank you, boys. All right. Bye-bye. See, now you got us all right, nostalgic let's, and let's, shit, let's caller. Let's go back to Tristan. Thank you, okay. voice. All right, let's Tristan. Go back to Tristan. Tristan. Let's, Tristan. Say his okay. Name Say his name wrong. Yeah, is it? Okay, here we go. God damn it. I can read it. Okay. Yeah, hey, this is Hoysel. I'm uh, over in uh, Dover, Delaware. Uh, who's. God damn. It's uh, Tristan. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, you're, you're, you're the one with the joke. Yeah, we got two. We had two calls already because uh, they had the jokes prepared. Uh, do, you do, do you have your joke? <laughs> what do you do when you come across an elephant in the jungle? What do you do when you come across an elephant in the jungle? Wipe it off and say you're sorry. But I mean, why would you? I'm not following. Hold on. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me review it in my head. You wipe it off. Why would you have to wipe off the elephant? Uh, I'm not. Don't what, do you, what do you do when you come across an elephant in the jungle? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I would fucking run, man. But it's I'm a devout coward. Come, well, if you came across it, if you, if you shot your load across it. Oh, like in a sexual kind of nature. You wanted sexual. Right, 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 right. Yeah, because, well, it beats the racism that you were trying to do before. There was no racism with pussy wussies, but now I'm giving you a joke and it's... Well, it's, yeah, but you, 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 you I mean... From what I remember, all you said was you knew racist jokes and, and possibly anti-Semitic, uh, which I don't jokes. appreciate. I don't know racist. That's not me. You're mistaking me with somebody else. Right? I don't even know what you're talking about. Who is this? This is the guy that Franz put on hold the whole time. I've been on hold for like the whole time. This is Travis. Tristan. Tristan. Right. That's what I said. So, okay, as long as your joke isn't racist or sexist, bigoted, homophobe, and especially anti-Semitic, we just don't, we don't want to do that. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, you're going to go on. Okay. Hang on. Get ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Okay. okay let me patch this through. Okay. Come on, Franz. All right. No, no, he's not getting through. We're going to keep him on hold. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's go to the next caller. Um, okay. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking guy, man. No wonder he's just lost at Bams for the last time. <laughs> I know. Like, that, makes complete that's sense. That's the mentality of somebody who just stays at Bams' house. <laughs> yeah. Hello, caller. Welcome to the Novak and Franz show. Yo, what's happening, dude? Good, brother. So I got a question for you. So I went to Bam Margera's house <laughs> and skated. So Did you meet Tristan? Tris Did you meet Tris? What's his name? Did you meet Tr Tristan? 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 Uh, dude, I met so many people there, I had no idea. Okay. All right. But I was, I was actually, like, after a certain time, I was the only skater there. And then Bam just came down and started skating with us, so that was cool. Yeah. But I was wondering, like, what, what are your thoughts on the fact that he released his gate code on the fucking internet for anybody to show up? That, to me, says he wants everyone to show up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's done it before. He'll probably do it again. So Why, what's, yeah, what's your theory on it, caller? I'm, I'm the fact that, like, he just lets anybody in his house. Like I there think was it's no, kind of sad. Like, I think it's sad. Yeah. Uh, I, I, he's lonely, right? He's, he's, yeah. he wants friends. He wants company. He wants connection. Right. And, uh, and he doesn't seem to have that right now. Therefore, like yeah. anyone, please come to my house. Anyone. So I think personally, I think it's kind of sad, but, but maybe that's what he wants. And if that's what he wants, then I'm happy. I mean, he likes to be surrounded by action. That's the thing. I my, my theory is that the more people he feels he lets in, the more craziness. Like, he'll be able to weed out. Like, if there's 10 people, he'll be able to find the one dude in 10 who's willing to do outrageous shit, you know? Like, he, he feeds yeah. on that kind of lifestyle. So, what was your impression of, uh, of the house? How long did you stay there? I was there for a couple hours. I drove, like three hours because I'm from Binghamton, New York. So I drove there specifically to go skate there. And Franz, I actually messaged you on Instagram and asked you like, if like, if you knew of like what the rules were and everything, because I, I wanted to be respectful. Right? Oh yeah. People always do that. They're like, <laughs> what do I do? I'm like, dude, keep me out of it, man. I don't want to, you know, so I get, yeah. like, I, I get it. It's, it's weird. It's like people I haven't talked to in years are like, yo, I want to fucking skate, man. It's like, I'm like, like, like what, what's the gate code? I'm like, dude, 
leave me out of it. It's not my house. I don't live there. Like, it's Tristan just, lives there. <laughs> yeah, Tristan lives there. <laughs> he also lives on hold I right want, now. Like, <laughs> weirdly enough, I wanted to be like as respectful as possible. And but the thing is, when I got there, I first off I thought the gate code wasn't going to work because I typed it in and nothing happened. And then the gate code, or then the gate opened, and I was like, "Holy fuck, we're in, boys!" And I literally just drove in, parked, and skated alone for like four hours. And then Bam showed up for ten minutes, and he goes, "Yo, where are you from?" And I was like, uh, "They're just in New York, sir." And I was so fucking nervous, dude. And he was like, "Oh, word!" And then he walked back to the house. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's ever, dude. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, that's about but right. But the sad thing is, is it was like a fucking ghost town, dude. Yeah, well, because I mean, that's gonna I happen. It's not always the show. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's not always going to be explosions and a TV crew there. I mean, you know, there's, there's going to be some downtime, <laughs> yeah. you know. I mean, it's funny. People people show up there and they expect Viva La Bam to be going on, you know. And it's, you know, it's, it's you know, there's always some downtime. But um, anyway, thanks yeah, for, for calling mean, in. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Bye, yeah, brother. Man. Cheers. Okay, cool. Peace out. Later. He sounds like a good dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I found that like a lot of people who show up to Bam's house are like, you know, really nice people. Um, there was the one dude who was arrested there. There was uh, some dude who um, uh, apparently he was, he was, was like somebody brought him there and he acted like he was everyone's best friend. And so everyone just assumed that everyone else knew who he was. No one knew who he was. So then the fucking FBI shows up with a mug shot to Bam's house. And they're like, do you know this guy? He goes, yeah, he's living at my house. They're like, we know he's living at your house. We're going to go get him. Bam's like, here's the gate code. Go get him. <laughs> so apparently this dude stole, like, I don't know what it was, maybe $30,000 worth of merchandise, that which the FBI found in his house. And so he's like on a fucking FBI wanted list. And, and here's how, what a smooth criminal he was, Novak. You should appreciate this. He didn't, after he stole all that stuff and he knew the FBI was looking for him, he didn't bother to change his Instagram name. It was his, it was his Christian God. It was his birth name mm -hmm. on his Instagram. So well, the cops just log in on his Instagram, see all these pictures of him chilling at Bam's pool. Yeah. And he even tagged the location. And that's what's sad uh, about the, the, the kind of company being kept over there. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's a free for all. Um, and I know Bam really well, Franz, you know Bam really well. And, and that's, I don't think that's the company that he would normally keep or, or want to keep. Well, I don't think he had the wisdom of knowing the dude was wanted by the FBI, but the dude, but the dude, the dude was involved in, sh in some sh shenanigans he was telling me about. And it was like, you know, but Bam's a generous guy. And like, he, he you know, he feels bad about, you know, like he does, he's, he's not, I mean, unless someone really fucks up, he's not going to fucking weed them out. You know, he's, he likes to give people second chances, but, um, you know, well, anyway, let's, let's go to the next call. Hello, caller. Welcome to Novak and Franco. Hello, caller. They hung up. Oh, they hung up. All That'll right. be all folks. All right. Should we, uh, and, uh, look. No, we're good. Oh, okay. We got another one. Okay, up oh, here we go. Another fuck call. this one up too, CJ. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, <laughs> caller. Welcome to the show. Hey, how you guys doing today? Good, buddy. Hey, awesome, awesome. Um, I saw that you guys um said to pick the topic, so um, I was just wondering um, what condition you were in, Novak, after you did Doo Doo Falls for Jackass Three. Because it never really showed like you getting up or anything. You're never going to believe like this, but I was in fucked condition. I was on loads of drugs, and uh, and it was great because now I was allowed to be on drugs at that point. I broke a whole bunch of ribs. I got a concussion. If I didn't have that helmet on, I absolutely would have died. The helmet split open because the impact was so uh, so so so. Uh, what's the word? I'm looking traumatic. For? Traumatic. Um, that they took me directly to the hospital. And they prescribed me a lot of pain pills. And speaking of arrested bams, en route to the hospital after doing doo doo falls, they said, hey, Mr. Hey, 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 Novak, there's a state trooper following. 
I said, oh, no big deal. I'm sure they're just, you know, an escort to get to the emergency room quicker. I get Because in- the state troopers like to give ambulances escorts. That's, That's how fucked up you were in your delusional <laughs> mind. Brandon Novak is a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> He's, He's, that true. Man, He's that so important. Like, why wouldn't they <laughs> Of course they're going to give me an escort. Fucking just I got to get to the hospital, yeah. get my pain pills. Absolutely, oh, right? Man. That's how my mind thought, right? The abnormal becomes the normal. And and I get to the hospital, and, and no sooner do I get put on the t- uh, the, the, the x-ray table, uh, the state trooper walks in, and he said, Mr. Novak? I said, yes. He said, we've been looking for you for two years now. Bam, strapped the cuffs on me uh, for uh, attempting to possess a prescription with a fraudulent pad. Yeah, he went into a fucking drugstore with like with somebody's old ass prescription and tried to change the date or something like that. And he's like trying to no. convince the person. What? How it happened was uh, I was ill. I woke up. We're filming Jackass, whatever that was, too, at Bam's house. I wake up, I'm ill that morning, but I had to film that scene. And I had this leather jacket on with all these zippered pockets. And I, I'm going through, hoping I find like a pill or two. And I find uh, a script. And it's from a dentist office. My buddy stole the script pad from a dentist office in Baltimore City. Jesus Christ. So he, <laughs> he gives me the script. He personally writes out for 12 oxycodone. Uh, 30 milligram pills. I take it. I'm like, all right, cool. This will fucking work. I go up to the CVS, right? Uh, on route one where it hits 322 right there on that corner. Yeah. And I, I go and I hand the lady the script. She disappears to the back. I'm like, fuck yeah, it's working. I, all of a sudden I see her walk out on the phone and she said, he's got a, a black leather jacket on, a, a black fedora, and he's driving a black Mercedes. And with that, I fucking flee. I, I leave, I leave the script. I'm sorry, that was not on the same day of filming. Right, right, right. right. That was like a year yeah, prior that, to. That's what led to your arrest. So, right. so then she called the police, I leave. That day, a warrant is issued for my arrest for trying to possess a script with a fraudulent pad. Cut to filming Doo Doo Falls, film it fall, break half my ribs, concussion in the emergency, in the EMS, going to the hospital, state trooper follows. I'm on the uh, x-ray table. State trooper walks in. Mr. Novak, we've been looking for you for two years now. We have warrants for your arrest. So I go directly from the hospital to George W. Hill Correctional Facility, where I end up bailing out, ultimately fucked up my initial charge, which was 30 weekends, six months house arrest. They caught me stealing. They caught me no, 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 no. They didn't catch you. I told you them. announced on <laughs> radio BAM yeah. on public airwaves <laughs> that you were smuggling Drug drugs man. into and, their prison and, while you berated the entire fucking Delaware yeah. County prison system yeah. and the all the guards and the fucking um, by name for some of them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah, they don't really take too kindly. The to warden, that. the assistant. Yes. Warden, yes. I fucking went through the laundry list and I gave him the riot act only for them to revoke my initial sentence, which was 30 weekends, six months house arrest to giving me directly go to jail. Do not pass. Go one year which I served. I served the first 90 days in the hole. Then they released me from the hole. And then what the hole looks like, it looks like this fucking room that we're in. Maybe that's why this rubs me the touch the wrong way. <laughs> I'm, I'm in a cell for 23 hours a day. You can't have books. You can't have commissary. You can't have a TV. The only thing you can have is a Bible if you were fortunate enough to bring one along with you. They let you out one hour a day. While you remain handcuffed, you have to shower in your handcuffs. You can use the phone. You can't even get fucking, you can only get mail is all you can get. You can make one phone call a month. Then my first 30 days in there, while in the hole, I'm detoxing from methadone. I'm detoxing from Xanax and I'm detoxing from heroin all at the same fucking time. I believe that I'm on the prices right while I'm in the hole. Oh God. Yeah. I believe Well, because they had, so they had the brand of soaps, shampoos, yeah. and conditioners Bob that, Barker. Are, that are sold to those kind of institutions are is Bob Barker brand. Not the same Bob Barker as on The Price is Right, but in your withdrawal condition. That's how I connected it. Yeah. And so I... I <laughs> <laughs> True story. I, so I, thought that I, was, I thought that I was on The Price is Right. Uh, I thought that my then fiance was fucking the assistant warden and they were colluding to keep me in prison. And, and you're, um, also you're, you're 
Cellmate Streets. Yeah. He's a fucking great a musician, great by the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Check him Go out check on Facebook. Shit out. It's, yeah. Uh, streets. Streets. Yeah. But um, he, yeah, uh, he caught you jacking off. Like you're sitting there trying to jerk off and with the, with on the, top, with the, on the, with the Bob bunk. Barker conditioner. And, <laughs> and he's, and he's going, he's going, yo, what you doing up there? Are, are you jerking off up there? He's like, yeah. All right. I'm jerking off. Yo, what the fuck, man? You're supposed to be incognito on that shit. What the fuck? Oh, dude, he was, I, I actually interviewed <laughs> I like, him. I feel some kind of way about yeah, this. Yeah. I interviewed him, a great dude. Um, but um, so his Facebook name is John Streets, S T R E E T Z. Good solid he's the man. guy. He's like the new version of a Jimi Hendrix. Go check his shit yeah, out. Yeah, it's it's great, dude. He he's so fucking talented. But, um, but so then I, I stay in there, and then and then from there, then they put me on uh, SMU Special Management Unit or SHU Special Housing Unit. I forget exactly which one, and that's even worse than the whole. Because now they hate me. Now I'm in the beast of the belly. I've talked shit on all the COs. I've talked shit on all the sergeants. I've talked shit on the warden. It's a privately ran facility. So they can, I'm literally in the belly of the beast. They can do whatever the fuck they want to me in there. And no one can really do anything. My lawyers lost all the appeals to have me transferred to Chester County. So now they're just, fu- any, any block that they put me on, the the police come, well, the guards come in and they rip the whole block apart. So they like, if they can't do anything to me, they're going to piss all the other inmates off on whatever block that I'm on. So they hopefully beat the shit out of me. So they'd move me from block to block. They tear the, to the block, the units apart. Yeah. And every time they tear, they tear the units apart. So here's, here's how the guards work it. If they don't like you, they will rip up your mattress and then you have to pay for the mattress. So th- they'll say that they're looking for weapons or contraband or drugs and so they'll rip your mattress up. They charge you, what is it, like 65 bucks for the mattress? But then they will rip up your cellmate's mattress and the mattresses of those in the surrounding cells. So now everyone's pissed off at you because yeah. there goes their fucking commissary money that they were going to spend on oodles of noodles. And then, like, Bam will come visit me, my sister, my mom. People would come, and they say, oh, he's not getting out. I was due to get out December 31st. Like, he won't be getting out. And so literally implying that they were going to do something to keep me in there longer. Yeah, yeah. I would have to, after they would rip my cell apart, searching it, I'd have to go back and research to make sure they didn't plant anything in my cell. Right. It was like legit that fucked up. Needless to say, they made my life a living fucking hell. It's funny how the guy's question nostalgia. was about. Nostalgia. <laughs> no, it's funny how the question was about doo-doo falls and we got into all this. The nostalgia. <laughs> Well, caller, uh, thank you so much for calling in. And it looks like you got a lot more than you bargained for. And we appreciate it. Hell yeah. Thank you guys so much. All right, buddy. Yeah. Thank you. Um, how are we doing on time? Yeah, because Pretty good. How, uh, how much time we got? <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> Vague. Oh, we can go for like another 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes. Okay, yeah. cool. I'm Let's... telling Allison you're going to call her in 10 minutes. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> She's asking. Setting Franz up. With <laughs> yeah, yeah he's, he's talking about something completely different. I know. He, um, he's completely in a, another phone conversation. Yeah. All right, so let's... Is Travis still on the line? Yeah, yeah, he's still on. Hold on a second. Tristan? Yeah. Tell him we don't okay. like Triscuits. Okay, here we go. Hey, Tristan. Yeah. This is Franz. Okay, you're next. Okay. Okay, so hang on the line. All right. What, dude, what did our screener tell you about... To, what, what is he trying to do with the jokes? He's, First he's, off, he's pissing me off, so you uh-huh. owe me one, because I'm going to be around you. I'm going to be at the castle this weekend, so okay. I hope you uh, are going to be around. What, 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 what is he telling people? He's tr- trying to tell people about jokes. He's, he's harassing everybody to do knock knock jokes. And like, he's confusing people too. Cause he came at me after I said a joke and he's like, I don't want anything racist. And I don't want it. I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? And he's just coming at me saying I'm anti-Semitic and I'm racist. So I'm like saying shit like, like I'm saying, I'm stealing people's jokes. I'm saying like, what do you do when you come across an elephant, uh, in the, in the jungle? Uh huh. He goes, what? And I said, yeah, you wipe it off and say you're sorry. He goes, he oh, goes yeah, you wipe it off. So wait, so what does he say? He, he, he's getting mad at every joke I say. He's like, I guess we're putting you on. And I'm just like, uh. Oh, he was a dick? Because we hire him through a company in Dover, Delaware. He's, yeah, I want you like, on, but he's he's just saying. Hold he on. reminds me of someone from like uh, like the old like E. Howard Stern shows. Like, uh, come on, yeah, babe. He, me, he me sounds babe. like Mel Blanc doing Bugs Bunny. Yeah, he's a fucking freak. Well, anyway, yeah. What? Why does it say on my computer screen? What is this? Racism? Anti-Semitism? What? What is this? I don't. Did know you what say the something? Did you, did you say something to like piss him off? 
No, racism. dude. I said, okay. All I said, he, I couldn't come up with anything. I didn't want to steal anyone's joke off the internet. So I said, uh, I said, I said, knock, knock. And he says, who's there? Uh-huh. And I said, orange. I, I said, orange. And he goes, orange who? Uh-huh. And I said, I said, aren't you glad I didn't say pussy wussies? <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about that. He's saying, listen, he's saying that. And I'm like, yeah, but Deco from CKY. And he's like, oh, I get it. So it's like an inside joke. And I'm like, yeah, dude. Like, But how is he saying you're racist? That's It's kind of weird. He, it doesn't add that's up. That's where he got that from. Okay. Just saying pussy wussy, he said. That I'm being. That I'm doesn't like, make I'm sense. Kind of okay, hey, hey, the things. Okay, so we're we're starting out on again. So okay, here. Uh, okay, you're you're gonna be next. So just hang on. Okay, okay, you don't have to talk to him anymore. Okay. Okay, just just listen. If we put you on, just don't say anything like racist or anti-Semitic. I don't know what he's talking about. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. okay. All right. Bye bye. I mean, no, 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 not, not bye bye. Hang on. Okay. 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 Good. 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 All right. <laughs> Jesus. Kid, man. Okay. Uh, hello, caller. Welcome to the Novak and Franz show. <laughs> hey, Joe. It's Catherine. Hey, Catherine. She sounds fine to you, Franz. You? I didn't Good. get a welcome like that. <laughs> Is this Cat from Massachusetts? Catherine from New York. Whoa, oh, hey, Catherine. Uh-oh. You know you little uh, fucking no, jiggle. Well, they're right next to each other. Oh, don't fucking justify oh, wow. your horse <laughs> behaviors. What's on your mind, Catherine? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Joe, how was your birthday? Um, it was very uneventful. I just wrote Novak's new book the whole time, but it was good. I, I got I got a lot done. Yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not a big um, I don't <laughs> I don't really um, uh, celebrate holidays for some reason. Ho- holidays are kind of sad for me because um, I, nostalgia. I, yeah. Well, I, you love nostalgia today. <laughs> no, well, I, I grew up in like a very abusive household when I was a kid. So it's like I whenever there's a holiday, I think of like sad times. I know I know it's really weird. So I, I kind of immerse myself in work to ignore it. Way to fucking put it. I know. On doesn't that show. suck? <laughs> I just. What well, did I just that's say? Understandable. I meant what I meant to say was it was great. I went out partying. Oh, but you know what happened? Actually, Bam called me at the last minute. He called me at like ten at night and asked me to go meet him at a bar. And so I get there, oh, wow. and what I didn't know is it was a strip club. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh and so, no. Yeah, and so I don't like. I'm completely uncomfortable around strip clubs. So like he had. He had like three hundred dollars in ones or whatever it was. So I'm like, mm-hmm. and but the, when the girls come around, you you know you, you want to give them something because that's how they earn their money. So I'm like handing them money, and then they're like, here, put it in my thing, you know. And and I have to tell them, I have to lie to all these girls and tell them I'm engaged and I'm not allowed to like, Uh-oh. and I don't really want to. <laughs> so I'm like handing them money, and like when you ha- just hand them money, they get pissed off. Like they 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 like they get visibly angry the one girl was really sweet why she, i don't know like the one girl was like oh it's so sweet you're engaged and you're here with your friends and you know you're, you're not going to cheat on your your fiance that's so sweet and the rest of them were like yes they were like no like put the money in my thing and i'm just like i don't know it was very strange so that's how i spent my oh birthday my it was God. good to see bam i haven't seen him in a long time that's fantastic i'm glad to hear thank you um you no back, i just no wanted to say i called you um about it was around this time last year when I was struggling and I just wanted to thank you. You really instilled a lot of hope in me and I'm in a really, really great place now. Thanks to you. Oh, wow. Thank you for uh, sharing that with me. That's, that's what makes everything that I do worthwhile, you know? Um, and the coolest really thing is, is now you that I'm you can like, you, for all that you've done. you know, you just sharing that God willing will give some hope to someone else who might be in a hopeless state of mind and body right now as we speak. So hopefully they'll say, if she could do it, I can do it. You know, the trickle down effect. So thank you. Continue to do what you do. And thanks for helping me stay sober, girl. Thank you so God much, bless. guys. See ya. Bye. Wow, that's, that's really nice. Deal, man. See, that must feel good to hear all the time, huh? That's, you know, it's kind of everything. Yeah. It, it is. Um, you know, and I go into this all the time and you hear it all the time, but mm-hmm. as addicts, as alcoholics, we're defiant by nature. We hate authority and we will never conform unless it becomes our idea. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to listen to you tell me what I need to do. But what I will listen to is seeing this lifestyle that you live that looks very appealing and attractive. And then that makes me say, if you can do it, then I can do it. And now the biggest 
part of that is it has become my idea to get better. Yeah. And then we, we flourish. That's a, dude, that's just, it's just like a reverse yeah. psychology thing. Yeah. Cause I get, you know, like I, the, the, the people that reach out to me are fans of like the, the work that I've done, you know, but I, I just can't imagine what it's like to be able to be, to, you know, be able to put, put yourself in a position where you're able to like, you know, help improve the state of people's health. It's like, that's, Dude, that's yesterday, a really cool thing. I had a hell of a day and it's, it's, I actually kind of want to I, I brag about the ingenuity of, of, of what I resorted to yesterday. Right. So I get a phone call from a guy in Baltimore he, ironically enough, he used to be the house manager of a halfway house that I lived in years ago. He caught me getting high in that house and he had to kick me out, rightfully so. Cut to three days ago, he has to go back to treatment. He goes, but then he leaves treatment. Now I'm going to put him into to, to treatment. I'm going to help him get into treatment. But every time I have him ready to go, the transport's not ready to pick him up. Oh, man. And then, and then when the transport ready, he's MIA. He's nowhere to be found. Because it's a whole thing. It's a whole it's, production. Yeah. So like like normally when you when you get one of these calls, it's like someone knows they know they, they want to go in, but their desire to go in might fade within Five minutes, one minute, 10 minutes. Or $10. Yes. Because they get that $10, they buy a bag, all of a sudden they think that they've overreacted. And you have to quick get on the fucking line and call all these people like, okay, like like you're his parents, you know, or or whatever. Hold him there. And then you got to call someone else. I'm on the phone treatment center and then the transportation. Right. So- so finally, he calls me. I'd lost him for three days, MIA. Finally, 9 a.m. yesterday morning, he calls me. He's in a shooting gallery, an abandoned house in Baltimore City. You know what they are, Franz. I've taken you there. The book's kind of centered around a lot of those houses. And, and he's in this house, and he's smoking crack, and he's shooting heroin, and he's ready to go. I call the facility. The transportation for the facility was doing a drop-off in Connecticut. So now we have no transport available. He's in Baltimore. I resort to... The facility that I'm sending him to is in Pennsylvania. I resort to going on Facebook and asking if anyone can do a 12-step call. What a 12-step call is having had that spiritual experience, uh, having had that spiritual experience, kept carrying it to the addict who still suffers or alcoholic who still suffers. Uh, I said, is there anyone that can do a 12-step call in West Baltimore right now? Two gentlemen reached out to me. They said they had just left the meeting. They can do it. I had them go to where this individual was, which is in, a, in one of the roughest hoods in Baltimore City. He's in an abandoned house. He's in there. All he has on is his underwear. His car is outside. Jesus. He wants to take his car to his sister's house where it's a safe neighborhood, but I can't let him drive because he's too high. So I have these two guys go. One guy drives his car. The other guy drives the guy to the sister's house. He gets clothes from his sister's house because all he had on was his fucking boxers for some reason. He gets clothes. Then I have another guy do me a favor and show up at his house to drive him two and a half hours to treatment, right? So that's the morning part of my day. The afternoon part of my day is I have a guy who has just overdosed and he's ended up in Laguna Beach Hospital. I forget the name of the hospital. Hospital's about to discharge him. He has, I have him set to go to treatment. He has no phone. He has no picture ID. He's about to be, uh, he's about to be released from the hospital's care from this overdose. He has no money. He has no ID. He has no phone. I call some friends in Laguna Beach. They show up at the hospital. They pick him up once he's released. I have to call a non for profit to have them buy my guy an airplane ticket because it's illegal to buy pay. It's illegal for treatment centers to buy plane tickets for clients to come to treatment. It looks like enticement or entrapment. Or human trafficking. Yes. Yeah. So so I have a non-for-profit buy his plane ticket. I have someone, I have to call uh, and get someone to pick him up from the, the hospital. Now again, time is of the essence because once he's released from the hospital, he might just want to run. He's agreed to go to treatment. I have to coordinate on a three hour difference, someone to be out front of the hospital by the time he's released. He gets released. My friend takes him to the airport, drops him off. Now I have to talk to the TSA and let him know that he has no ID, but he's coming to a treatment center. Mm -hmm. He's got to show his wristband. He's got to show prescriptions and he's got to show uh, uh, the paperwork from the hospital to say it's his name. He has Mm -hmm. to get there three hours before the flight. And I have to talk him through this all without him having a phone. (laughs) And then I have to monitor (laughs) his fucking, his, his, his progress and then he doesn't arrive into Florida until 6 a.m. this morning. Wow. He got on a, fl- a plane yesterday at 2.30 And California the whole time, time there's a posse around him with phones and making sure he doesn't leave. Yeah. And, and you yeah. know he wants to leave. Half the time he wants Literally. to leave. Half the time he wants to go. Half of them 
wants to just bolt away and run, which you've seen people do before. I've seen run you away do it, yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm very happy and grateful to report that today, both of them are in treatment. That was all day yesterday. I'm dealing with this guy in Laguna Beach, California, while I got this other guy held up in a crack house and nothing but his underwear, and he's too high to come out. He's scared and paranoid. Wow. <laughs> I had to resort to Facebook and ask people if they just improv. I had to act off like impulse and improv and, and just like make it happen because wow. I just look at no as an excuse. I bet you slept well. I did. I did. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. All right, uh, here's our last call. Hello, uh, b- uh, before we wrap things up with Tristan, who's been on hold the whole time. Hello, caller. <laughs> Hello. Yo. Hey, buddy. Hey, uh, so my question is, I like the story, by the way. It's great that, you know, what you're doing out there. Oh, thank um, you, brother. But it's, it, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit off that topic, though. Was there ever any plans for a CKY5? And if you guys did, sh- did you guys shoot anything for it? Or was CKY4 kind of the final one? Um, I have over 600 hours of unseen footage. Um, not all of it is obviously the quality that you would see in a CK, you know, in CKY video it has to be edited through and all that stuff. But, um, you know, I have plans to slowly re-release the, the CKY series in HD. So it's all done in HD. Um, come 2020. I, know, I love them. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be you know, releasing the series in HD. And what I'm going to be doing is something very, very special Anyone who pre-orders is going to get their name in the fucking credits of the movies. How cool oh, would well, that be? That'll be me. Autographed, physical Blu-rays, HD CKY, all new color corrections, new sound mix, the whole deal with your name in the fucking credits. The whole shebang. Right? So, um, you know, so I'm going to, ta- you know, take my share of the profits from that. And um, I'm going to work on releasing um, uh, a a CKY five. I we probably won't call it CKY five, but we're going to call it. I don't know. I don't, I haven't even gotten that fucking far yet, but that's, that's kind of the plan. And it takes a long time to do this kind of a thing. I mean, it took me two years to digitize those 600 hours in my spare time. Obviously no one's paying me for this. I can't, for some reason I can't find anyone to fucking finance this project. I, I, I don't understand. I've been to pretty much everyone in Hollywood, all kinds of distributors. Um, everyone wants it for free. So what, what all distributors want is they want me to give it to them for free and they make all the money and give me and, and give me nothing for the years of my life that I've invested into this. So I don't know. It's pretty crazy. So I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> Nostalgia. Um, so any yeah. other, any other questions? No, that was it. I love the stuff that was released on uh, watch DC TV and um, I've always had all the, the original DVDs. So that's well, awesome, man. Where well, do you see it on? Where do you see it on Blu-ray? It's going to knock your fucking um, socks off. I'll be one of the first to buy it. Thank you so much. Thanks caller. for calling in, man. Appreciate it. Yep. Bye. All right, all right. So Ooh. let's go back to Tristan and then end the show without yeah. letting him get on. All right, all right. Here we go. So this is the ending. Yeah, Before yeah, yeah. we do this, yeah. we should probably bid our farewells. You know, no, we're going to do it with him on the line, which will frustrate him even well, more. Real quick before we go, I just want to think. No, 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 do this with him on here. Oh, okay, okay. Because the whole time he'll be fucking right. mad that we're talking okay. over him. Okay. Right. <laughs> I got you. So I got you. Right, yeah, but if, he's ta- if we're talking over him, people aren't going to fucking hear what we're saying. No, no, it's they will. Confusion. I know, it'll be good. Okay. You'll hear him protest, trust right. me. All right, here we go. Hello, caller, you're on the air, the Novak and Franz show. Is this Tristan? Yeah, it's Tristan, what's up? Dude? Hey, buddy, how's it going? It's going. Good, good. Hey, what's that? Okay. Hey, uh, looks like that's all the time we have on the Novak and Franz show. Thank you so much for listening. Um, if um, if you like a uh, autographed copy of Dream Seller or our uh, graphic novel, the the Brandon Novak Chronicles, starring the CKY crew, go to brandonnovak.com. All one word. Yep. Hit, uh, hit the store and you're there. Um, or you can get those on Amazon. But uh, internationally, you want to go to brandonnovak.com. Taylor, did you have any closing words? Um, I just wanted to. Thank the three of you guys, Franz, Novak, and CJ, for doing this show. Um, it's it's awesome to do this every other week. Also, it's it's just great for the Might Be News Network. Um, <clears throat> and also, we have a lot of things planned in the second half of the season for this show and all the rest of the shows as well. We're going to start filming this show. We're going to put the videos out there. We're going to speak that into existence and make it happen. Yeah, I agree. A lot of people really want it to happen, so we're going to make it happen. Um, we're going to be back... Uh, about a month or so, five weeks for this show. 
um, and and after Labor Day sometime. But it's going to be fantastic. Go to patreon.com slash MBN network to subscribe. Um, Franz got a Tumblr. Uh, just gave Novak his. A bunch of the people that signed up have gotten their stuff. Um, we give a diff- bunch of different incentives and a bunch of different things, monthly giveaways. It's fantastic. Otherwise, go to mbnnetwork.com to find all the podcasts that we do on this network. It's awesome. Thank Franz, you guys you so much. Tinder? Thank you. You got a Tinder? Tinder. That's what he a said. Tumblr. You, tum- Tumblr. Franz is on Tinder. I am not on Holy Tinder. Shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you imagine me it. on Tinder? I knew it. God, well, I, I I've never it. even seen Tinder. What's it like? I don't know, Franz. You're on yeah, it. Yeah, you don't oh, know. Nice okay. try. <laughs> but seriously, though, thank you guys so yeah. much for sharing your All stories right. and sharing your time. Thanks with, for with having thank us. Thank you. Yeah, the, the, being on the show is awesome, and thank you so much for for making everything happen. Um, CJ, well, give us some words of wisdom. Yeah, CJ, you haven't said anything the whole something. time. You've been playing on your phone. What do you got to say? You know, I really uh, am still processing the, the great <laughs> event Novak and I went to yesterday. Yeah. yeah, that's all. All right, for fuck's what sake, fuck is that? <laughs> let, me, let me take over here, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I can't thank you enough for tuning in, listening to the fucking babbling nonsense of all of us here at this table. And as usual, if you caught yourself caught up in an addiction, you can't see that it has that bag, that bottle, that needle, that pipe. There is help. Pick up the phone. Call me directly. Six one zero six. Three five nine zero nine two. Me or one of my team members will do whatever we can humanly possible to get you the help that you need and deserve. Please, there's no reason to suffer with the disease of addiction any longer. Thank That's you. Awesome. Thank. And do, do do we still have that caller on the phone? I'm out of here. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. All right. No. Is he, is he on there yeah, or not? I think, I think he's gone. I'm here. What did he have fucking hang on? I think he hung up. Right the guy's gonna wait that whole fucking time. I don't. I don't see you any don't callers on. Does he know how much? Does he know how what how hard it was to patch him Is this through? A joke? With all the and and dude, what was him with the fucking racism? I don't know. It made no sense. The, 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 call, the screener, right the, the screener was know? definitely uh, convinced that he was racist. Oh uh, yeah, he definitely was. Yeah. Why would I'm you do still that? On the phone. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Franz, you fucking knocked it out of the park, dude. Wow. That was hilarious. That was that was I did not expect that. Thank you, boys. Good awesome. fucking job, oh, boys. Man. Awesome. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm still here. He's gonna be looking at you for uh, at the house this weekend. He said, <laughs> "I'm gonna get my ass kicked." So oh, dude. No, but, but but he he actually got a really cool privilege. He got to be pranked. The whole right, episode. CKY style. I can't believe no, he stayed on. Stop trying to kiss that pussy boy. <laughs> now I'm gonna Fuck my you. Oh man. Well, if he's a real CKY fan, he would he would find this he funny. Would, I, I know. Think, I think he's funny. Yeah. yeah. Oh he man. He should be grateful we allowed him to be the butt of the fucking joke. <laughs> and he got more airtime than any guest yeah. in history. Ever. It's all about oh, perception. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks again, everybody. We'll see, see you man. next season. Or if next you want more of this, tune in next yes. year. We love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>